Good morning, everyone. We just want to start off by saying thank you all for coming out this morning. Um, we're really excited. Our team has put in a lot of work, a lot of hours and energy and heart into bringing this to fruition. And we're really excited that today's the day we finally get to share it with everyone. Um, so we just want to say that we hope today our play Come to Bethlehem meets you guys where you're at um, and just brings you a greater understanding of the magnitude of God's grace, love, and care for us. Um, so yeah, join us as we dive into a little bit deeper into familiar stories and familiar feelings that come with this time of year. So we're just starting off. Our youth are going to start off with a little skit. Um, yeah, so enjoy the show. everyone to our show, The Crazy Truth. And now, oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And now, for our awesomely amazing, stupendously splendiferous, electrically entertaining, the one, the only, Professor Imani. Well, hello there, everybody. Professor Armani here, and I am sure glad to see all of you. Today is a very special show, as we celebrate this season for the very reason we are all here tonight. Tonight is going to be crazy. Can you join me? <laughs> but I cannot do this alone. I need my never let you down, always be around, bestie who cannot wear a frown, Zany. <laughs> Gee willikers, Professor Imani. There's some really nice things he said about me. But you know, I'm nothing special. I'm just zany. Are you kidding me, zany? You may be small, but even the smallest of us can do big things. Just take my new invention here. Gee, Professor, you weren't kidding. This invention of yours is really teeny tiny. Don't let it small stature fool you. It packs a big punch, you know. How's it work? Watch as it takes one small piece of paper and turns into a ton of confetti and fills this whole room. Wow, what a great way to celebrate Jesus' birthday. Tons of confetti! And this little contraption can do all that? Sometimes even the smallest, tiniest, littlest things in life can still touch the masses in a big way. And this machine is no different. What do you think of that, everybody? That's crazy! Crazy! That's impossible. Dr. Dow, get up! Dr. Dow, get up! Dr. Dow, get up! No, I will not get out. You get out. Get out now while you still can, before Professor Imani makes fools of you all. You can't really believe that something this small can do the big things he's talking about. I believe it. Zany. You of all people should realize you're so little, so tiny, so small, too small to do anything very big in this world. Well, I'm not so, I mean, I'm small, but See? I... See? what I tell you? Danny, don't listen to him. Do you know what you should listen to? No, what? Listen to the story in the Bible about Jesus' birth. Oh, come on. You like this story, don't you, don't you? I do too, yes I do, yes I do. The night you were born was a very special night. We seemed always so tired from our long trip to Bethlehem. When we finally arrived, there wasn't room for us anywhere. Nowhere except a stinky, old stable. That's right, you were born in a stinky, smelly stable. But God was watching over us. A beautiful star was shining high in the sky right above us. We wrapped you up and laid you in a manger. It was really quite cozy. And then some shepherds came to see you. God sent a whole sky full of angels to tell them about your birth. And then some magi came to visit you from far, far away. They'd seen the bright and beautiful star in the sky and knew that God had promised to send the King of Kings and Lord of Lords into this world. So they followed the star and came to see you, the Son of God. My little boy, yes you are, yes you are, my special little guy. Are you writing all this down? No, I'm writing down all the reasons I'm a terrible father. What? Joseph. <laughs> 
you're a wonderful father. Are you kidding me? I'm not a wonderful father. I mean, compared to his real father, his heavenly father, and I have a list here to prove it. Joseph, you are his real father. God chose you, you to watch over him and to be his daddy here on this earth. What was God thinking, picking little old me? I mean, I'm nothing special. I'm just a carpenter, just an ordinary man, just an average Joe. And this list is all the reasons why God should have picked someone else for the job. Joseph, God wasn't looking at a list like this when he chose you. In fact, our son Jesus, he came to the earth for a list like this. Not so he could throw all the bad stuff in our faces and tell us how bad we are. But so he could... Hey, that felt kind of good. See, now, come on, Jesus' birthday, we should be celebrating. Yeah, you're right. How do you want to celebrate? Happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday, Jesus. I guess big things can come in small packages. Hey there, Dr. Duck. I think God sending Jesus as a little itty bitty baby proves that. And even though Mary and Joseph weren't perfect, nobody is. And God chose them to be Jesus' mummy and daddy here on earth. And God chose us too. Sometimes we may feel like we're not enough, or we mess up too much, or we don't do more things right. But God looks at us with an open heart and a kind smile. Kind of like how Mary and Joseph look at their little baby, Jesus. <laughs> Dr. Doubt, what's wrong? That's just, just, just so wonderful. I so often feel like all my doubting is just going to make God mad at me or something, and like I'm not doing any good at all. But you're saying that God loves me no matter what, right? He sure does, and there's nothing you could ever put on a list to make God love you less. He will always love you. And me! God said, Jesus, show us that. Sometimes we may feel small or insignificant, or that we can't do anything right, or that we're not very special. But God says we're important, and that we can do big things. What do you think of that, everybody? That's crazy! That's Christ. The crazy truth is, everybody, that God thinks you are pretty special. So special that he sent his son, Jesus, to come and live with us and love us, to teach us how to live and love God and others. Yep, that's it. No one is too small or insignificant to do big things for God. And I'll prove it with my itty-bitty, small, but mighty invention here. Are you ready? I am. I believe. Let's count down together, starting with five. Five, five four, three, two, one. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you! Woo! Until next time, everybody, remember, God loves you and keep on seeking to discover the, the crazy truth! truth. How long is this road anyways? I can't even see Bethlehem from here. And it's cold, isn't this the Middle East? I thought it was always hot here. I am freezing. You should have told me to wear warmer clothes. You see, you see, right there, a climate-controlled tool bus. Climate-controlled tour bus. We could have taken one of those. Give it a rest. You're not going to die. But if you're going to keep whining about it, we could sit on these rocks for a bit. Listen, Nolan, you told me to pack my bag for a knock-my-socks-off Christmas adventure. Hence my Birkenstocks. But walking the road between Bethlehem and Jerusalem on Christmas Day was not high on my list of expectations. Surprise! Uh. Here, have a drink from my genuine imitation leather canteen. No thanks. I have Coke in my backpack. Coke? I told you I would take care of bringing all the food and drinks, remember? I wanted this to be a recreation of how it was during the Bible times. Yeah, well, I know you a little too well to trust you with that. And now that I see where we are, I'm extra glad I brought my own stash. You probably brought, I don't know, hard bread and 
dried figs. What did you bring? Well, it is what they would have eaten. Oh my goodness. And now I'm glad I have Coke and Pringles in my backpack. You'll thank me later. Come on, I just, I wanted the full experience. This road is where Christmas begins. I've always thought of it as sort of a, I don't know, a metaphor for coming to Jesus, I guess. It's special somehow. People I've admired all my life were here, actually here, right at this spot. Maybe even sitting on these very rocks. I just wanted to get inside their heads and feel what it would have been like for them. Well, I'm feeling it all right. I bet they would have taken a tour bus. Quit complaining. We've been walking like 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, at least try a fig. <laughs> they can't be that bad. Not happening. Why do they even still sell figs? They make fig newtons, you know. I think we might actually have some of those. <laughs> I'm totally feeling it now. You want one? Uh, I'll stick with the authentic experience, thanks. <clears throat> Suit yourself. Yeah, that's good. I'm totally feeling it now. Oh yeah, that's good. You know what it needs? Ice cream and some whipped cream and a cherry. Newton Sunday. We're going to have to try that when we get home. <laughs> You're impossible. <laughs> I keep your life interesting. That's why we're friends. Well, you drive me crazy anyway. Does that count as interesting? <laughs> you betcha. Uh, I mean, there's still dried figs and bread, right? All <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, right. Well, while we're here, you might as well tell me what happened on this dusty, barren, freezing cold road. Oh, are we there yet? Oh, my feet and my back ache. Oh, this is too much for an old woman like me. Honestly, Naomi, you're as bad as a child. Oh, I feel like it. I feel like whining and complaining every step of the way. Oh, my back hurts. <laughs> oh, you know, this is not the first time I've walked this road. Oh, but I was a whole lot younger back then, and everything didn't hurt. Oh, but I see the road is still the same. The dust, look at it, it's unbearable. And the trees, look at it, ridiculous. <laughs> oh, and walking. It, it takes, takes forever, forever and a day. day. Oh. I must have said that once or twice on this trip. <laughs> a few times. Hey, why don't we take a rest? It won't put us too far behind and a bit of food might help. Why don't we rest on these rocks here? Good idea. Well, this is the last of our bread, I'm afraid. But we should be in Bethlehem soon. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We've run out of money for food anyway. When we get to Bethlehem, we're going to starve. I might as well just lie right here and die. Not that you're bitter or anything. Huh, bitter. Bitter. The last time I walked this road, I had a husband and two handsome sons. God has taken everything from me. Everything. I'm here, Naomi. And I've lost family, too. Yeah, you're right. My, but aren't I cantankerous today? Today? <laughs> wow. Well. Maybe I do have more cantankerous days than not. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the last trip that I took on this trip with the boys? Actually, no. You've always been a little bit closed about that part. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really have a great attitude on that trip either. And I was kind of ashamed of my bitterness. And I see not much has changed. Mm. You know, I remember when Elimelech made that decision. We were sitting at the dinner table and he was staring at his empty plate and I knew something was up. And he announced that we were moving to somewhere that had more food. And just like that, no hesitation, no discussion, no consideration for what I wanted, just pack up the boys and be ready for the day after tomorrow. 
And then that man, he went right to sleep, like nothing had happened and everything was fine. Mm. I don't even think he knew how hard I cried that night. Oh, I was so angry at him, so angry. That next day, I didn't understand how he could leave the God that had given us the land and our home, and what, for a little bit of food and a pagan city, Moab? Mm. Oh, sorry, Ruthie, <laughs> sorry. I understand. Mm. You know, I always thought my faith was strong until that very moment. I spent the next day packing up all our meager belongings and getting the boys ready, and I started to doubt everything that I believed in. <sighs> but the boys, they thought it was a grand adventure, you know. Mm -hmm. they, I remember they played games right along this very road. Shalon, oh, <sighs> that boy, he could run circles around me. He would run and run and run around and around and around until I tripped over him, <laughs> and then I made him carry my bags. <laughs> and my lawn, oh, he was my talker. He would talk and talk and talk and talk. <laughs> I remember one time, one time Milan uh, said to me, Mama, I'm not going to talk until we get to the next resting stop. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then when we got to the next resting stop, he talked nonstop <laughs> about not talking until we got to the next resting stop. <laughs> oh. he, he did love to talk. Yeah, he did. And he loved his jokes. Oh, he had this favorite joke. He used to say to me, Mama, how does a boy upset his mama on the Sabbath day? And then he would giggle so hard, I never understood the answer. <laughs> he loved that joke, even after we were married. He used to say that someday our kids, they would... Never mind, Naomi. Tell me more about the trip. Mm -hmm. Well, by the time we hit Moab, I was sick of my own attitude. So we determined to make the most of it, and we worked really hard that first year. I was really lonely really lonely but slowly i saw that life was coming starting to be normal again until Milan, or uh, until elimelech came home sick i didn't think much of, about it he was strong and way too stubborn to let anything get to him oh but i was really wrong and the next day just like that he was gone and I had to look the boys in the eye and tell them that their father would never be there for them again. Mm. Oh, so there I was in a foreign land and I was a widow and I had two small children. I had no friends, no family, and no way to support us. Wow, that must have been so frightening. Oh, it was, Ruthie. It really, really was. Elimelech drove me crazy most days. <laughs> but I always knew he would provide for us. And then when he was gone, every ounce of security he had was gone too. Mm. Oh. Everything was suddenly up to me. Wow, so what did you do? Well, I took in some sewing and did laundry and you know some odd jobs in the neighborhood. And the boys, they were old enough to work by this point. We scraped by, barely, but we did. Oh, those boys worked so hard. They became men long before they should have had to. I know they felt the pressure of caring for me, mm -hmm. for providing for me. And then Shalon met Orpa and Melon met you and suddenly life wasn't about me mm -hmm. anymore. Oh, Milan would say, oh, Mama, Mama, I can't wait till you meet Ruthie. She's so beautiful. You're just going to love her. <laughs> oh, he talked about you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must have been a bit annoying. <laughs> a little, to be honest with you. I didn't want to like you or Orpa. I was supposed to take the boys back to he Bethlehem and find wives there. Hmm. So why didn't you? I don't know. Fear, I guess. In Moab, I was set. I had a house and the boys were providing for me by this point. And I didn't know what to expect back at Bethlehem. So, 
I get, so, and then I met you and, and Orpa, and you both are so sweet, and I couldn't help but love you. And I gave you then my blessing when I wasn't supposed to. Well, I'm glad you did. Yeah, me too, me too. And you know the rest of the story, that big, beautiful double wedding. Oh, that was a celebration. Mm. And then we moved in, happily living together, happily until, until that accident. Yeah, I'll never forget that accident that made me a widow. And it left me childless. Oh, Ruthie, I am bitter. This life has been so hard and so unfair. I have been angry at God for a long time. I've been telling you all about him, but I've been resenting God at the same time. You must think me an awful, awful person. Oh. No, Naomi. I think it makes you very, very human. And the God you described to me, well, it sounds like he can handle it, don't you think? Oh, Ruthie, you're so sweet. You're sweet, and I am bitter. And if we grab a salty person along the way, ha, we're complete. <laughs> now, Naomi. <laughs> all right, all right. I think we can go on now. Kay. Let's continue traveling. Oh, I see the road, though. The dust is still unbearable, and those trees are ridiculous. Naomi. All right, all right. Tell me, though, one more thing. What's that? How does a boy upset his mama on the Sabbath day? <laughs> Naomi, what doesn't upset a mother on the Sabbath? <laughs> True. <laughs> okay. A, you are a great storyteller. Oh. And B, that is the most depressing Christmas story I've ever heard. <laughs> How is that a Christmas story? Don't you remember what happened next, though? Well, yeah, they got to Bethlehem eventually, and Ruth married Boaz, mm. and I think they had a kid. Yeah, and that child was? I don't know. Abed or Ebed or... <laughs> it was something about Abed because she was tired from this never-ending hike. It was Obed, the grandfather of King David. Jesus was born from the line of David. Don't you get it? Ruth was Jesus' great, great... Lots of greats, Grandma. Oh, that's pretty cool. I never, I never actually put that together before. See, you laugh because I'm obsessive about everything, but you can learn a thing or two from someone like me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, good, you're ready to walk again. No, no, no. I just need my Pringles. All right. I'm ready for the real Christmas story now, not the depressing one. Joseph, I don't think I can go any further. I'm sorry. I'm just so tired and everything hurts. It's okay, Mary. Let's sit on these rocks and rest here for a while. Oh, how I wish I could have afforded a donkey for you. I just didn't see how we could. Shh. We've been over that. It couldn't be helped. I'll be fine. I just need to rest for a bit. I will eat, but only if you eat too. You're impossible. You need strength too. Oh, Mary, I'm sorry we have to make this trip right now. The timing of this just seems so wrong and I find myself worrying. Isn't that silly? God literally sent an angel to tell me what was gonna happen. And still, I worry. I understand. I think about everything. My mind never stops. I'm always planning, wondering, dreaming, pondering. What do you think about? Oh, normal things. Like what it would be like to be a mom, and then not so normal things. Like how it would feel to look at him and know he's the promised one. Will he be just like other babies? Will he cry when he needs me? I mean, I guess he would have to, but it's just so strange to think about, you know? What will he look like? Will he look like you at all? I've wondered that too. There's so much I don't know, but 
one thing I'm sure of. He will be the most loved baby ever. Joseph, I know this must be so hard on you, all of it, but I think the gossip is the worst. I understand why they talk about me, but it hurts me so much to hear them talk about you like they do. I hate the gossip, Joseph. I hate it. It's a little thing to bear for the Messiah, Mary. Uh, you're right, but you don't deserve it. You're the most selfless man I've ever known, Joseph. My Joseph, you truly will love this baby as your own, won't you? With your whole heart? Without hesitation. I will admit one thing, though. What's that? I'm terrified. Really? I thought it was just me. Oh, Mary, why would God choose me? Me? I'm just a poor working man who's never changed a diaper or bandaged a skin knee. I don't know the first thing about parenting. This baby deserves someone incredible, the very best. But instead, he gets me. Well, I think you're incredible. But I understand. I feel so unqualified to be anyone's mother, let alone his. Oh, he kicked me. He's getting anxious to join us, I think. You know, all my life I've heard people talk about how the Messiah will come. Some say he'll come roaring in like a warrior and sweep Rome into non-existence. Others say he'll enter powerfully as a king and subdue all our enemies. But it turns out he's slipping in softly the smallest whisper of peace and hope to a world that doesn't even know he's here. A whisper of peace and hope. I like that. But and I'm, I'm still, still terrified. terrified. <laughs> you know, Joseph, all my life I've been taught about God's promise of deliverance, how he was going to step into our world and somehow save us. I've dreamed about it, wished for it, concocted scenarios in my head of what it would be like, but now he's here. <laughs> I don't know how to handle it. I'm afraid. I'm unsure and confused. I am too, Mary. Joseph, I'm starting to have pain. Oh no! What do I do? You can't have the baby here. I'm okay, but we should probably be on our way. Okay. Not much further, my love. I'll help you. You know what I'm pondering now? What's that? How I'm gonna get off this rock. I can carry something. Okay, you can carry the baby. You're impossible. He'll be born soon, Joseph. I can feel it. Oh, I hope he looks like you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk home? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon for you, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy Walked where angels run when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Ooh. 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 See the devil here, the devil.
Joseph. I don't know. Well, you call yourself a Bible scholar. When have I called myself a Bible scholar? <laughs> All right, well, what else happened on this road? Uh, oh, it's possible the wise men used it. I mean, they came from the east, but if they were north at all, they would have walked this road. Oh, huh. cool. They should have carried caravaned with Mary and Joseph. Mary really looked like she sure could use a camel ride. Ye old tour bus, the only bus that spits and stinks. <laughs> well, for starters, we don't actually know that they had camels. You're kidding. But the biggest thing is that the wise men came later than Mary and Joseph, like maybe two years later. Oh, my God. I'm writing a letter of protest to the nativity scene manufacturer. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> All right. So two years later, the three wise men... Actually, we don't know that there were three. We only know they had three gifts. Okay. So two years later, the numberless amount of kings... No, not kings, astronomers. Oh my goodness, my whole childhood has been a lie. I am glad you're not dramatic about anything, ever. <sighs> I can't believe you brought a bucket of popcorn. All right, tell me about the wise not kings. It looks like we're very close now. You should be in the city by this evening. That's the best news I've heard all year. Hey guys, wait for me! Uncle Hakeem, I know you said to stay back with the camels. Whoa, 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 whoa. You said there were no camels. Oh, I said we don't know if they had camels. In my story, they do. Okay, well then look at what they're wearing. Shouldn't, shouldn't they be in royal robes and holding jeweled scepters? Uh, would you make a cross-country journey on foot through dangerous territories filled with roadside robbers wearing a royal robe and holding a jeweled scepter? Hmm. You have a good point. You Please continue. Thank you for your permission. Uncle Hakeem, I know you said to stay back with the camels, but Mama's got a pounding headache again. She said to come and walk with you. Can I walk with you guys? Just for a little bit. Please. Please. Shahab, Arif, you may walk with us. You know that I'd like to have you around, but please, just this once, could you please be quiet? Shahab and Arif like to walk in silence. You got it. You guys are the best. I'm so Shh. glad. Right. No talking, just walking. We'll be the four magi, forever remembered for our great journey to honor the new king. Down through the centuries, our names will be famous. Uncle Hakim, the wise Shehab, the great Arif, and me, Sam. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa. Hold it. Listen, the Bible does not give us their names, so I looked up some Eastern names by their meanings. Hakim means wise, Arif means knowledge, and Shehab means star. You get it? Don't you get it? Yeah, but 
Sam? OK, I, I lost my Wi-Fi connection and had to make up the last one. Just work with me here. Oh my goodness. I'm glad I brought my popcorn. This is going to be really good. Sam, we haven't been traveling for nearly two years to be famous. We've come to honor the new king. Oh, I know, I know. Yes. But we could be famous and honor him. Couldn't we? Couldn't we? Suddenly, I'm feeling awfully tired. Let's go sit down on those rocks over there. The caravan will be here shortly, and maybe your mama will be feeling better by then. So, how much further is it? You have any idea when we'll get there? What a cool map! Yeah, where are we on this thing? We'll be there soon, Sam. Soon. Probably even today. <laughs> today? <laughs> I knew it! I just knew it! Mama says, Wait a minute. Do you think it's over that hill? Are you sure we're going the right way? I mean, how do you know with certainty that we're supposed to go to Bethlehem? That's a good question. Uh, you know what, Sam, we've studied the Hebrew schools for many years. The scrolls say that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. What is a Messiah? <laughs> I thought we were going to see a king. And what will we do when we get to the big city? And where will we know to where to find him? Is there a sign? Seriously, we have to look for a sign that says Messiah, turn left at the Cozy Camel Shack? Or do we Sam, have to... Sam, Sam. Would you like to do some scouting for us? I would love to. What do I do? You just go down there. Just go down to the edge of that, the road there and look over the hill. And wait there for us, Sam. Don't come back till we come along. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll be right back. I don't know how my... That day in and day out. <laughs> We are wise men. We'll stop and ask for directions. <laughs> Uncle Hakim! Uncle Hakim! Oh, I saw it. It's so beautiful. The city is more beautiful than I can even describe. That's awesome, Sam. Soon the caravan will be here and we'll give them the good news. Then we'll get our gifts ready. Gifts? You guys have gifts? Of course. We can't approach the promised Messiah with nothing to offer now, can we? <laughs> well, I'm thankful for such a safe journey, guys. I mean, I just can't believe how close we are to being able to kneel before the new king in the finest we could afford. Bringing our gifts into the city of Bethlehem, I wondered if I'd ever actually see this day. You have an eye? We're going to go rejoin the caravan. I'm sure you could use some uncle and nephew time anyway. Sam, you're awfully quiet all of a sudden. Is there something wrong? Oh, uncle Hakim, we're, we're so close to the city and we're going to see the new king. I didn't bring any gifts. I think I just realized that I have nothing to bring to Bethlehem. Oh, I totally see where this is going. Sam is the little drummer boy. <laughs> what? You know, I have no gifts to bring. Pa rum bum bum bum. You forgot to give him a drum. That is right. I just corrected every biblical misinterpretation you've had and stuck the little drummer boy in with the wise men for good measure. So he's not the little drummer boy. No, oh, there was no drummer boy. Don't you get it? I am Sam. I sense a Dr. Zeus moment coming on. <laughs> Quit it. Would you tell stories in the cold of frankincense, myrrh, and gold? Would you tell stories in a box? <laughs> I wish I was wearing socks. Can you not be serious for just one minute? I mean, for crying out loud, I'm at my limit. Good one! You kept it going. I'm sorry. I was just trying to lighten the mood. I know. I'm sorry, too. You put a lot of thought into this, didn't you? Probably too much. 
What did you mean earlier when you said you were Sam? Exactly that. These stories, I'm all of them, you know? Naomi's bitterness and lack of faith. Mary and Joseph's fear and uncertainty and Sam. That's me too. I'm just a guy who talks too much and has nothing to offer the king. I just, I struggle, you know? I know these stories and all the Bible facts, but somehow my heart doesn't. I don't have it all together, and I don't even know where the pieces are. This life is so hard sometimes, so painful and scary and messy. I look at the world around me and I'm sad. I think about my past and I'm, and I'm bitter. And I look to the future and I'm afraid. And then Christmas rolls around and I'm supposed to pretend everything is merry and bright. But it's not. So I booked this trip because I thought, Maybe if I was here, here where it all started, where they lived and walked and carried their burdens, here where salvation was born, I thought that maybe, I, I don't know, I don't know what I thought, it's probably just a dumb idea. I'm sorry I cheated you out of your trip to Hawaii. It wasn't a dumb idea. <sighs> Look, I've been so busy complaining and teasing you that I haven't stopped to look around me. You know, I think you're on to something. I think Christmas has a lot more to do with this dusty, barren road than pretending everything is merry and bright. I look around and at this countryside and it reminds me that God didn't make us clean up our act before we came to him. He came to us, to our dusty and barren, messy world. Naomi didn't have to give up her bitterness to go to Bethlehem and Mary and Joseph didn't have to be perfect and fearless. <laughs> and if wise man Sam was real, he didn't have to bring anything but himself. You and I both know that I am no theologian. But if going to Bethlehem is like coming to Jesus, then it seems to me that that's all there is to it. God came to us because we couldn't clean ourselves up and because we had nothing to give. I think that's the whole reason of Christmas. He came because we couldn't clean ourselves up and because we had nothing to give. Huh. So, you're saying I don't have to have it all together, just come to Bethlehem and watch God work. That's beautiful, man. It is also wisdom from a very unlikely source. <laughs> Maybe you're the fifth wise man. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Pringle the great and wise, not king. You want to know something else? I actually happen to know the name Sam means God hears. So I think that was actually the perfect name. Well, I think I'm ready to go. Okay, uh, we can flag down a tour bus and ride the rest of the way. I mean, it is particularly cold today. I, I should have booked it in the first place. Um, no, I think you were right. I think we should walk the rest of the way. I don't think this is something that we should miss. Really? Yeah. All right. Pringle the Great has some thinking to do. <laughs> but I am still not eating any figs. What, you mean you don't want some on this road? <laughs> no, just Fig Newtons, a la mode. 
<laughs> I'm hungry. You got anything else in your backpack? Yeah, I have some more dried bread if you want some. Pringle the Great, nothing. Pringle the Stingy is more like it. <laughs> I still have some chips if you want some. Thanks. Yeah, I told you you'd be thanking me later.
Would you sing with us? Oh, come. Oh, come. Thank you everyone so much for coming. I hope you guys enjoyed our performance.